Good morning. Um, all power to the people. That's a uh, phrase that I started saying back in 1968, the year that I joined the Black Panther Party. That was uh, the beginning of my life and my development as a, as a strong black man, a positive individual, someone who had a future, someone who, uh, who had a purpose in life. And that purpose was to serve my community, to help my people, to empower black people. And this is why I joined the Black Panther Party, and this is what my, the activities that I indulged in during that time was uh, organizing my community, letting people know that they had the right to determine their own destiny, um, the 10 point program, just doing any and everything I could in order to help my people and everybody in general, technically. We, um, we form coalitions with any and everybody who believes in freedom, justice, and equality. Because um, that's what we were involved in, it's, it's really ridiculous, and it's, it, and it's puzzling to me how and why we became a target, but I do understand it now, all these years later, how and why we became a target of the uh, counterintelligence program. It's because we were very successful at our job. We were very successful at organizing people. We were very successful at empowering people. We, we, we actually encouraged people to believe that they, that they had a right to be free and that they had a right to have a say so. And, and what went on in their communities and in their lives. Um, I had started having children early in life, and I have been, I am a victim, let me start out by saying, of the uh, COINTEL Pro program. I'm a, I'm a victim of it, so are my children, so are my grandchildren, and so are my great grandchildren. We've all been affected by the common intelligence program. And, and, and it was, uh, uh, I had, I was very naive as a young man. I felt that if I was, I, I knew that I was doing the right thing, trying to work for my people, because I started out in life not doing the right thing. I used to hang out on the corners, and I had no purpose and no future in life. When I started having children at a young age, I actually started trying to get a job. Uh, at that time, um, there were not very many opportunities for black people. I, at best, I was considered a second-class citizen. Uh, we actually had a saying back during those times, and I said it, I'm looking at saying it myself, that if, if, uh, if you brown, stick around, if you yellow, you mellow, if you white, you all right, but if you black, get back. And I was black, and I was stupid enough to be saying things like this. So when uh, my children came and I started trying to get, em uh, get uh, employment in order to be able to take care of them and was denied employment, uh, the Black Panther Party came along and I joined that and it gave me a purpose in life. It gave me uh, the strength and, and it started my development as a human being and as a person. What happened then was I was actually framed on several occasions, sent to the penitentiary, and, and you, I had a lot of children early in life. I had three kids by my first wife who passed. I had three children by my second wife, and during that time, her sister passed, and I adopted three more children. So at the age of 23 or 24, I was responsible for nine kids living in the same house and being a Black Panther Party uh, a member and trying to uh, desperately do something to make it uh, the future better for my children. I did not want my children growing up in, under the same conditions that I grew up under. So I tried hard to change those conditions. And, 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 and the Black Panther Party was successful. Uh, but the COINTEL group, the police, the FBI, cared nothing about my nine children. They cared nothing about my rights. I was framed. I was actually picked up one day. Um, this is when they, they this, this particular time, they came to my house and arrested me for investigation, took me to jail. At the time that, uh, that they came into the house, the lady that stayed there had two legal guns registered to her. They claimed that they were stolen weapons and charged them to me, which wasn't really my house. And so I went to court for possession of illegal or stolen weapons. Uh, that couldn't stand, so the day I was supposed to go to trial, what they did was drop the charges and before I was released, but you, 
this is really what they did was pick the jury and they went all through the process of the preliminary hearing and everything behind one charge, dropped the charges one that morning, refiled the game in charges for uh, falsifying documents to purchase a firearm and proceeded right along with the trial and picking of the jury as though I had ample time to prepare for a defense. Actually, naturally, I didn't have, so naturally, I was found guilty in less than 15 minutes, and I was on my way to Magnolia Island before I knew what happened. It, they, the only evidence they had against me was they didn't find a weapon. They didn't have anything. They had an FBI agent that said he was going through the, uh, uh, actually, a tobacco firearms agent, uh, and said he recognized my handwriting as the person who had purchased the firearm. And it was a false signature, so they arrested me on that. They had police officers, FBI, retired FBI agents, and the other person who signed this is the same person who's Richard Brown. So people found me guilty, took me away from my nine children, and sent me to McNeil Island. I stayed in McNeil Island for two, two and a half years. After two years, the, uh, I, I won an appeal. The court, the Ninth Circuit ordered them to release me within six months. They refused to release me, so six months later, the Ninth Circuit ruled uh, uh, released me, and I was able to go back home. That was just one incident in which I was actually frightened. I have also been tortured in 1973 in New Orleans. Uh, Harold Taylor, John Bowman, and uh, Ruben Scott, they were tortured there uh, horrendously. Waterboarding, beatings, deprivation, cattle prods. All of this was done to them over a period of four or five days. And they, and they uh, confessed and signed pre written statements about crimes that had been uh, committed from 1968 to 1973. Uh, I was tortured in San Francisco. I was beaten. I was kept out. My hands were, uh, handcuffs were placed on my hands so tight and for so long that it took me two or three days to gain feelings back into my, 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 my fingers and my, my hands. I didn't know if it would come back or not. So, and this was all done because of the common intelligence program. Um, in 2007, uh, many years after 1973 and the so-called confessions which were thrown out of court, as being illegally obtained through torture. In 2007, after the uh, Patriot Act and the Homeland Security, uh, eight of us were picked up again and charged with the same crime that had been committed back in 1971 that we had already been, uh, uh, that had already been, that it was illegal for us to be, for the, the state to proceed with it, and we were charged with it again. It was uh, with the, they were trying to use the same confessions that were ruled illegal before. But you have to understand that in 1973, what was illegal then, in 2007, it really wasn't illegal. So they were trying to bring those same confessions back and use them against us and, and convict us of a, a, a homicide that happened in 1971. So the counterintelligence program, the Korean Telephone, and amazingly enough, several of the people who were officers uh, uh, FBI officers and part of the uh, counterintelligence program <coughs> were brought out of retirement and deputized and are now homeland security officers. The same ones that have tortured us and the same ones that framed us back then are the same ones who can, uh, uh, arrested us in 2007. And when they rang the doorbell, the first thing out of their mouth was, do you remember me? And the first thing out of my mouth was, yes, I remember you and I still hate you. <laughs> so, if, uh, I will be, if you have any questions for me later, uh, I'll be more than happy to answer it. But that's uh, just a brief portion of what has happened to me in the last 17 years. Thank you for your time and patience.